hey guys welcome back to our channel it's a go funny lungo back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for 21,000 subscribers you guys are the best keep liking commenting sharing everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed we're very very appreciative hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed motivate me by giving me stuff to react to just give me the name or the link down in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to check it out find us on facebook and instagram as funny and jesse head there subscribe not subscribe but head there say hi and we'll say hi back find our vlogging channel funny and jesse 2.0 subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out so today i'm going to be reacting to the people who born in non-muslim families what is their fault if they follow what is taught to them so without wasting time let's get into the video good evening dr naik my question to you this evening is with all due respect to islam you said that idol worship is the greatest sin in Islam and Allah does not forgive an idol worshipper for this. But what about people who have been born into families of religions other than Islam? For example, in India, most of the population is Hindu and lifelong they may not have had exposure to Islam or somebody else who may have educated them about that. What is the fault of those people? Will they never reach paradise? Will Allah never let these people enter paradise? What is their fault if they believe what is being taught to them since the day they were born? Does Allah not have mercy on them? Thank you. Sister a very good question, a very logical question. What about those human beings who are born in non-Muslim families and the parents are doing idol worship? So who's to blame? How can Allah punish them? And that's a very good question. That's the reason a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that every child is born in Deen al-Fitr. Every child is born as a Muslim. Irrespective of whether he's born in a Jewish family or a Christian family or a Hindu family or a Muslim family, he is born as a Muslim. Muslim, as I told earlier, by definition means a person who submits his will to Almighty God. So every child when he's born, he submits his will to Almighty God. Later on, he's influenced by his elders, by his parents, by his teachers, then he may start doing idol worship, he may start doing fire worship, and he may go to the wrong path. That's the reason whenever a non-Muslim accepts Islam, the more appropriate word is revert. It's not convert. Convert means going from one faith to another faith. Revert means a person was on the right faith, went to a wrong faith, and came back to the right faith. So the more appropriate word, sister, is revert. Now coming to your question, how can Allah hold responsible a person if he's born in a non-Muslim family. That's the reason if a child is born in a non-Muslim family, before he gains maturity, if he dies, he will go to Jannah, inshallah. Why? Every child submits a will to Almighty God. He's a Muslim. He may have a Hindu name or a Christian name, John, Ramu. It doesn't make a difference. But as long as he's a child, and if he dies as a child sister, that child will go to Jannah, irrespective whether he's born in a Muslim family or non-Muslim family. Later on, when a child grows up and he becomes an adult, then it is his responsibility what he does. That's the reason if a child commits a crime, the court is lenient. When he becomes an adult, then he cannot say that my father taught me to rob, therefore I'm robbing. If a child grows up at the age of 22, and if the police catches him after robbing, he cannot say that my father taught me to rob, therefore I'm robbing. Will the judge let him go? If he's a child at the age of five, the judge may say, fine, he's a child, he hasn't attained maturity. But once he becomes an adult, and then if that adult tells the judge that I'm robbing because my father taught me to rob, he will not be excused. Everyone responsible for his or her own deed. Now, once a person becomes an adult, it's the duty of that adult to find the truth. It's the duty of us Muslims to convey the message to the non-Muslim. But irrespective of whether a person gets the message or not, if a human being is that free, there were two tribes which did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. One tribe was the Kapauku tribe and the second was the Australian Aborigines. These two tribes did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. And when researchers went and tried to find out what was the way of life, it was nothing but Islam. But they didn't call themselves Muslims. They believed in one God. They believed that God had got no images. He had no idols. They prostrated when they worshipped God. It was everything of Islam but in name. So if a child is not given any external influence, he submits his will to Almighty God and remains on that path. 
Now, once a person becomes an adult, it's the duty of us Muslims to convey the message of Islam. If we do not convey, Allah will hold us responsible. He'll hold us responsible. But irrespective whether we do the job or not, we'll be responsible. But Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan annaul haq that soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Allah has taken upon himself that he will directly convey this message to every human being himself. So if a Muslim does his job or not, whether we are good examples or bad example, Allah will directly put in the heart of every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, about the truth about one God. So once the message comes, that human being may follow, may not follow. He may not follow thinking that if I accept Islam, I may have to give up the things which I like, I may have to give up my alcoholism, I may have to give up dating and dancing and, you know, whatever thing which is haram in Islam. He may not accept the message, then he's responsible. Similarly, if the father teaches him something wrong, to rob, it's his duty to realize that robbing is haram, it's a sin. It's the thing which is wrong. He cannot go and tell the judge that because my father taught, therefore I'm robbing. Similarly, here when Allah directly puts the message into the heart of every human being about the haq, about the oneness of God, and the idol worship is prohibited, yet if the individual continues, he or she is responsible. So on the day of judgment, therefore Allah says that no non-Muslim will ever object to the justice of Allah because your organ will give witness about you. Your eyes, your hands will speak about you. So on the day of judgment, even those people will be put in hell, they will never object to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What they will say, please give us one more chance and Allah will say it's too late. There are many chances given in this world, but you live only once in this world. So on the day of judgment, no non-Muslim, no human being, even if he's put in hell, will ever object to the justice of Allah. He'll only say that please forgive me and it will be too late. Whatever is there in this world, this world, as Allah says in Surah Mul, chapter 6 and verse number 2, is a test for the hereafter. Hope that answers the question, sister. There are many times we ask this question in hopes that we figure out how people of the past, when Christianity didn't exist, when Islam didn't exist, when whatever didn't exist, uh, lived their life, you know. Um, and even in as much as we are civilized now or we live in a world that we're calling civilized now i believe um people had their own lifestyle which we may not be aware of which i may not be aware of and their lifestyle may be similar to the one that we're living now be it when it comes to technology or whatever else that we can think of um there are some people, even though they are mature, but have not come across um, Islam itself. They practice just any other religion, but have not had anything to do with Islam. And um, like Dr. Zaki Naik said, it's up to people, Muslims, to spread the word. If he treats you, he treats you. If he doesn't treat you, then he doesn't treat you. God can't hold you accountable for something that you've never come across. I guess what God is going to look at is um, the lifestyle you led. He's spoken about spoken about tribes that are not civilized, you know, but the manner in which they lived is in relation to how Muslims live, you know, according to Islam, which is very very intriguing because I would have never thought that people. Uh, I, I don't know because to manage the past and the present there's still like a gap like how how come they're doing this this way and not this way you know why are they not worshipping idols why are they believing in one God those are questions that I'd love to um, see answered by people that are actually experiencing this you know so that they tell me very well how the culture is and how it's related to the present it would be something worth um seeing otherwise if you want to spread the word of god spread it 
if someone wants to listen let them listen and let them adapt it at their own will and um i think god is merciful enough to welcome everyone as long as they believe he's only god and yeah otherwise it was a very very good question let me know what you guys actually think about this question what are your thoughts and um another thing that was mentioned is um uh, if you're not mature and you die even though you're not belonging to islam or identifying as that you still go to heaven which was very very interesting to hear let me know what you guys think about all that that dr zaki Naik said in this video what are your thoughts you know what you have to add to this video if there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video